While they couldn't give the exact age, the giant corrosion crystals confirmed that the disk was genuinely ancient. It was a revelation that was about to have even greater significance. Because something was about to be uncovered that would transform the disk from being merely a great find into a worldwide sensation. It was all to do with the images on the disk. The moon and the sun were clearly visible. That in itself was stunning. But between them were mysterious dots, what seemed to be stars. So astronomer Professor Wolfhard Schlosser was called in to try to identify them. Were these just random images or did they mean something more? Could Bronze Age Europeans have been advanced enough to have mapped the stars? First, Professor Schlosser isolated the largest group of stars. These were spread out in a pattern across most of the disk. Then he ran them against a computer program to see if they would match with the stars in the night sky. But there were no matches. These stars, it seemed, were just decorations. The stars on the disk are only meant to be a background, a decoration, something like this. Of course, looking like a starry sky, but nothing more, no constellations. But then his attention turned to the small cluster of seven stars right between the sun and the moon. It seemed to form a distinct pattern, like a constellation. Professor Schlosser quickly realized that of the constellations known in the time of the Bronze Age, the cluster resembled one above all others. The Pleiades. The Pleiades is very well known in Greek, in Mesopotamia literature, as a very important star or star group. And so the Pleiades are the first candidate on our list. The Pleiades is one of the most mysterious constellations in the cosmos. With the benefit of telescopes, we now know it consists of 11 main stars. But several of these are barely visible to the naked eye. Usually only six or seven can be seen. So Schlosser turned to the oldest images of the Pleiades that he could find. Tablets and scrolls from the east. And there he saw a wonder. The Pleiades, drawn with just seven stars. An image, just like on the disc. I nearly had tears in my eyes because uh, it came to, as a surprise to all of us because we would imagine such a find in Egypt or Mesopotamia but not in Central Europe, Central Germany. And so it was fantastic to all of us and I nearly had tears in my eyes, yes. Mapping the stars has been one of the great achievements of humankind. 
It is a task that has obsessed scholars and scientists for thousands of years. But no one knows when or where he first started to understand their movement or write this knowledge down. What is for sure is that in the civilizations of the East, Egyptians and Babylonians depicted their important constellations as animals. But realistic star images did not appear until 1400 BC in Egypt. These had always been considered to be the oldest known to man. But all that seemed to have just changed. Sixteen hundred BC. It made the Nebra sky disk the oldest accurate picture of the night sky in all history. Two hundred years older than the earliest images found in Egypt. The disk is the earliest concrete astronomical representation of the stars in the sky. It's the first representation of the universe in human history. Suddenly, an amazing question began to loom. Was early European man really an astronomer more advanced than his counterparts in the great Mediterranean civilizations? The disk contained not only an image of the stars, but also a moon and an image of the sun. And beneath it, a curious golden curve. And it was now that the hard questions began. It was Fleming Cowell who threw a spanner in the works. At the Danish National Museum, he has built up an incredible collection of ancient images of ships carved into rocks all over Northern Europe. They're represented as curves, often surrounded by tiny strokes. But these are not images of seafaring ships. These ships we see carved on the rocks of the north. They are not ordinary ships in our practical sense. They are not sailing ships just for fun or for transport. No, they are ships of the religious world. Fleming Cowell now made a vital connection between these religious ship images and the curve on the Nebra disk. Both in the north and on the Nebra disk, we see the ship together with the sun, helping the sun over the heavens or through the night, through the underworld. I believe that the ship on the Nebra disk is the sun ship. Then along came Professor Schlosser, the astronomer. He had noticed yet another feature of the Nebra sky disk. As well as the sun ship, there were shallow curves on the side. Again, they seemed to be very deliberate shapes. I didn't know what they were, but I measured the angle, and it was 82 degrees. 82 degrees is a very specific angle. And it reminded him of something that Europeans had known since the earliest times. For it is here that between the high midsummer sunset and the low midwinter sunset, the sun is seen to travel around 80 degrees 
along the horizon. Since prehistoric times, ancient monuments have been aligned to mark these solstices all across Northern Europe. But the precise angle varies from place to place. Further north, it would be 90 degrees. To the south, just 70 degrees. In just a tiny band of Central Europe would the sun's journey measure exactly 82 degrees. And as Professor Schlosser returned to the site at Nebra in Germany, where the disk had been found, he realized something that was beyond coincidence. That's where the sun sets midwinter. That's where the sun sets midsummer. The angle between both is precisely 82 degrees. This angle corresponds to the journey of the sun between summer and winter for this specific latitude right here in Nebra. In other words, if the golden horizon bands did mark the solstices, then the disc really could have been made in Europe, right at the place where it was found. <laughs> <laughs>